Hi guys, how you doing? Greg here from GN Tiling Limited and I'm here working today with Build of A&E. Today I'm at the Regency renovation project. I'm going to give you a quick walk around of all the bathroom areas that we're tiling today and then give you a bit of a rundown of what we're doing. So this is the first room I'm working in. Uh, this is an ensuite. Clients decided to go for 1200 by 600 tile on this one. We're literally just doing inside the wet area. We're actually going to come, if you see down here, I've just marked out onto the wall. We're actually going to be coming about 100 mil past where the tray is going to go, and we're going to mirror that on both sides so everything looks nice and symmetrical. You'll see that we've done some scratching up of the wall, just where the paint has had to get a mist on. So we've scratched that up, we've primed it. We haven't actually got a prime onto these walls because uh, this is elements board, it's fully water resistant. All we make sure that we do is we tank all the corners, all the edges, and where we put all the screws. Uh, so the lads have already done all of that pre our visit. They've also done it all around the bottom of the tray, as you can see. As usual, we'll cut all that off afterwards. Uh, so everything's nice and flat and pucker and beautiful for me. So this is, like I say, it's the first room. So if we pop into the second room through here, let's give you a quick walk through. This is one of the main bathrooms. So in here, we're using this white tile here, 400 by 250 mil, slightly bumpy sort of mottled effect tile that we bought from a local supplier, Trinity Tiles and Bathrooms. They're actually just over the road from this project, which is great for us. We're just doing inside the shower, same setup, we're going 100 mil past where the glass is going to go. Again, where the painters and decorators have had to do some misting, we just scratch this up, give it a quick go over with some primer. We always use acrylic based primer, as you may have seen in some of the other videos that we've done. Again, elements board again. Same setup really. Difference in here is we're doing the floor. This is the only room that we're doing a floor in upstairs on the first floor. They're going to be using this featured tile here. Porcelain backs, uh, fully rectified uh, tile, but it's got this patination on it, kind of like a Victorian sort of pattern going on. It's going to look really, really nice in here because there's a bath going over in this corner, toilet, towel rail, sink behind me, and obviously the shower. So later on, hopefully, we'll get some shots of how I do the scribing around these trays. So I'll talk you through all that. So that's going in here, and that is on top of our underfloor heating again. Now, we have a new slew of product in here. This is a uh, product from Doral, and they've given us a call up, asked us if we'd be interested in using it. So we're giving it a go. To be fair, it's been absolutely brilliant. Really, really impressed with this, as I am with the slew of products. So I'm keen to see how this is all going to turn out, but at the minute, dead impressed with it. So yeah, that's this one. And there's one more on the suite, which is the master, if you follow me through. And then this is the master on suite. Obviously you've seen the room getting built with all the lads. Over to us now, similar setup to the first bathroom that you came into, using the 1200 by 600 tile again. It's a slightly different color. The same setup though, coming 100 mil past, again, primed up, scratched up, always a good practice that is to scratch up. You don't want your adhesive just keying straight onto the paint because all you're relying on is the paint. So we like to scratch that up so we get a really, really good key. Always use acrylic based primers though. Please don't use PVA if you're going to be doing this yourself. Not good to be doing that with tiling. Again, elements boards, tanks, same old story really. That's all we're doing in here. Tiles are over here. It's just a slightly different shade of tile, a little bit darker. So yeah, it's gonna look really nice in here, a bit of a feature in here and should set off really, really nice of all of the period features they've got in here. We'll set some time lapses up and uh, yeah, you can watch sort of how we do some stuff through the day and then I'll point out some more things as we're doing it, technical wise and stuff like that. Cheers guys. On the previous video we did for the outside project down at uh, St Mary's, using these ruby pads, amazing. These suction pads make so much light work of these big tiles, getting them up in the air. I mean, we can lift them, but when you're trying to place them on top, it's just, you've got danger of chipping your edges. These things make life so much easier, I can control the tile so much easier, and I haven't got my hands behind the tiles or anything like that. Everything's on the front of the tile, 
Name with loads better. So I would advise strongly that people use things like this if you're gonna have a go yourself. Laying big tiles. Same story when I'm doing the sides. There's at the top, so the actual tile will come up to roughly about where my finger is. About there. So I'll just come back about 10 mil when I'm trialling up. That's why I like to draw these lines around when I'm scratching up as well. It just gives me something to go to as well. It makes life a lot easier. You don't want these if sprayed all over the place. It just looks horrible. And then when the decorators come to rub down everything, you can always kind of see it when it's been decorated. If we do it this way, it'll look lovely, crisp and clean. So it's the finish you want, really. Right, what I've just quickly done here, the way I like to do it is, I've measured from the edge of the tray at the bottom down there uh, to the edge of my toil. So I've done the same over here. Measured back, made a mark, struck a line up, and then that's where then I'm then measuring. So it's not this line here, it's these little lines here. That is the edge of that toil, theoretically. So then I measure back from that edge, back to this side of the hole, and I give myself about a mil, two mil, so my dimension from this line to there is actually 417. So I do it 415 just to give myself a mil and a half, two mil play. Do exactly the same on the other side, 445. And then I get, get yourself a level, get yourself a level line straight off the bottom of the pipes across. Because it's much, much easier to do it rather than trying to do it underneath your pipe and trying to crunch your, your tape. If I show you trying to get your tape underneath here like this and trying to get a dimension is really difficult. So you can do it, strike your line across, get your tape off the bottom there, up to where the line is, so much easier. You can see exactly what's going on. So I know that's 1180, right? Happy days. And that is to the bottom of my pipe. So a little bit crude, it's just the way I like to do it and more often than not, I get it right. I know when I mark up this tile, if I do 415, 445, and then 1180 is the top, because it's a bit of a notch out where the uh, grout joint runs through here, actually runs through where these controls are gonna be. So yeah, that's how I love to do that. When I cut these holes generally, I like to use this little bit of kit. This is amazing, this is from a company called Tileroy. I get these from Trinity Tiles again across the road and we just got the tiles from. Uh, they supply all these little things. These are amazing. So when you're going around, I can take all these little burrs off. But I'm trying to use a tile file because it's porcelain and tile files don't really work very well on it. This is amazing. So you can put it onto your grinder. I like to run it at full whack, so that's 6,000 RPM. Some people slow them down. I think it's better if you're working at it at its full pace. Uh, so I will keep it on 6,000 RPM. Obviously, really, really careful with this. Um, it's not anything to be messing around with. Uh, you can hurt yourself, obviously, using it. But for this, it's a great bit of kit. So I'll show you how it works. all the little burrs off so when you're going in with a grinder obviously it's a straight blade it's when that's running into something all the blades straight this basically just makes everything curved as long as you go steady with it then um, you can get the nice curve on it you cut 
just little things we like to do try and uh, well if you've got the right kit why wouldn't you use it so that's what we do with that we're going to try our in see what happens Normally with tiles, it's kind of, I, I generally have my mix the same way anyway, most of the time, depending on what we're doing. But most, more often than not, so I'll kind of have it. So if you can get it out, it should just fall off. So the easiest way for me to describe that is kind of it's a little bit like dough. The reason for that is it's thick enough so it doesn't just fall off the wall when I put it on, but it's wet enough so when I put the tile on, obviously Jack at the minute is just fat butter in a tile up for me. When I put it on, I get really good contact between the two. Obviously trying to achieve as close as you can to 100% coverage. If you go too stiff with your adhesive, the tile will just push against it, but it won't actually stick into it. What you want to do is all your teeth that you're doing across the wall, so I haven't finished doing that one yet, um, you want all that to, to collapse. If your adhesive is too stiff, it just isn't going to happen. So try and get your adhesive so it does that. If it's, if it's running off it, that's too wet. Uh, that's way too wet. Um, yeah, so like this, you're kind of in between. So that, that's just how I like to do it. So, But as you can see, it's kind of a little bit like plaster. If it was really, really wet and ready, then it would just be pouring down the wall and it's just no good. So you see again, it just stays there, but there's some nice, it's kind of like jelly just moves and nice. So when I put it on, it stays on where I want it. So when I'm traveling, it doesn't all fall off as I'm traveling up, but like in the same breath, it's still wet enough. So it can bond to my tile. And again, if you're not actually a tile, a bit of advice, don't put too much on at once. So I know I'm gonna be ready for this cut in a minute. Jack's cut my tile to size for me, but I've got to do another cut like I did a minute ago around this hole on the right hand side. So this tile over here is ready, but I haven't done the hole yet. So I'm not going to try that up yet because I don't want the adhesive to be bonding to that wall because that cut could take me a few minutes. So that adhesive is getting the air to it and it's going to start getting the skin on it. So when you put the tile onto it, it won't get full contact. So you don't want that. When you're traveling up down to a tray as well, I try where I can to be as clean as I can as well. So if you've got loads of adhesive, you just see me scrape a load of adhesive out then from underneath here. If you've got loads of adhesive backed up down there, when you're going to place your tile on, the tile actually be held off by the adhesive. So I'm not actually down onto my tray. This tray's been put in, give or take half a mil in the odd spot, but that's actually in the forming of the tray. It's perfect. So it's dead level. So I know if I just sit directly onto the tray, I'm going to be bang on. If I've got adhesive underneath there holding me off, that's just no good. So cut that out, get a sponge and then just have a little clean up. It takes seconds, but it makes a massive difference. So, and just because you're doing a dirty trade doesn't mean you need to keep it all dirty everywhere. It's nice to try and be as clean as we can. Less tidying up later, nice for the client, trying to respect the area that you're working over. Yeah,
So then guys, uh, this is the second ensuite. As you can see, we've just finished getting these two walls on, same as what we did this morning in the other one. This one's slightly different, deeper vein in some of these. So we've had to try and spread these out sort of evenly for the client um, as requested, but I, I think it's turned out really, really nicely. So now I'm just gonna go and do a little bit of setup work on the floor in the main bathroom. So what I'm doing, I'm just gonna set this floor up tonight. I've squared everything off on here because what we wanna try and achieve is because of the patination and the title and obviously these lines, what we're trying to do is it's obviously old walls in here. So we're trying to work into the original. The lads have dabbed it out and try to straighten it up best we can. And to be fair, it's pretty good. So this gap over here is symmetrical. So I've just had to try and play with it a little bit again straight to get that right. That then sets me for the front here. What I've tried to do is keep it so you've got a full pattern. I didn't really want like a cut a cut piece going into the pad here, I didn't think it'd look very good. So I've shut this underneath the doorway. We can obviously adjust this when the threshold strip gets put on at a later date for the outside here, but that's actually landed pretty, pretty good. So it's about halfway underneath the door, which is what I'm always aiming for, between 15 mil and 22 mil underneath the door, which is good. So what I've done, I've cut one of these sides off a tile, so I've got three panels left rather than four. Put that against the tile here, so that's given me enough fat over on this left hand side, well my left hand side, uh, for where the tile rate would go in, obviously the rip down here underneath where the baths go. Which has then led me to this, so a lot of people ask me about this, it's simple enough, you just need to do a certain few different things. So all I've done is I get my tile, and I'll have full one down here, on, over the top of here, and then I take this measurement from here to here, and then what you do, you need to lay a level across here and it will give you what your dimension is if you measure back to here. So that's, oh, this is one I cut earlier. Um, so that is basically my dimension from there to there is here. And then from going straight up is there. So I've cut that on the angle just quickly for the purpose of the video. So I lay it in here like that and then put some spacers in to keep myself nice and straight and I push it up. Now a lot of people don't do it this way, you might have some people that will say this isn't the way to do it, but this is how I do it. So that, I know, this line here of this tile is right in line with the line for these two tiles here, so I know that's dead straight. You can check your end here, so if anything actually, about half a mil there. So that is absolutely bang on. Push it tight up to your tray, so that's where my point is there, in the centre. What you need to check, is that your dimension from this point here to the tray should be the same as from this point here to the tray. So, in theory, when I scroll around here, I leave my pencil onto there, right onto that point, and what I'm trying to do is keep that angle consistent all the way around, and that'll give me what my scribe is. So when I grind that round, it should fit perfectly in. I leave the lining when I'm grinding, so if I can tickle a little bit out after, but you can't obviously glue a bit on. So that's a little bit of a tip. You prefer to cut a bit under just to start with because you can always take a bit more off. So we'll give it a go. Basically, when you're grinding straight, you keep your blade straight. What I try and do is give it a bit of an angle. So in theory, you're back cutting, you're cutting the bottom of the tile more severely than you are the top. That way, you've got less chance of blowing the face of your tile, especially with a pattern tile that's got ridges in it. So I always try and put a bit more of an angle on it, because the vibration of the blade can ping basically the top of the glaze off of your tile. So if I do that, I get more of a back cut on the tile, and you kind of save the tile a little bit, and gives you a better cut. Look down the tile, it's a slight back cut to it, which is nice. Always try and get rid of all the snot, so that is lovely and smooth all the way around there. I've got nothing foul on the tray because I don't really want it to be fully touching the tray. Uh, when you walk on floors, you always hear a little squeak. It's also a tile that, if anything, cuts a little bit too tight. I only leave about half a mil, mil normally, sometimes two. I mean, I can get away with that, but um, yeah, that's sort of how I try to do it anyway. So 
so then guys, um, start of a new day. So just a quick one today, what we're doing. So we start getting the walls on this morning, as you can see here, just set my uh, laser up. So now I'm nice and plumb on the outside edge. We're going 100 mil past again, which is the same as the other bathrooms. It just looks quite nice, because when you get your uh, shower screen on there, we like to leave a little bit past, rather than having a little scratchy bit next to the edge of your screen. We just think that looks a lot, lot nicer, a lot neater. So that's what we've gone for. This tile, obviously a lot different to the other tiles that we're using, so large format porcelains. Um, this is a 400 by 250. This is a ceramic. Nice, plain, simple, straightforward. Because the feet stops to the floor in this room, uh, you saw a little bit of that, me setting it up last night. So we're gonna get this finished here. So this just works out two full tiles and a 190 cut into the corner. So it's gonna look like I've basically got five tiles and I've split one of them in half from the corner. That's how we've decided to do it. Obviously okay all this for the client. We've gone up to, so we're above this uh, waterfall sort of rain head they've got on the shower here. So we're nicely past that. So when the fitting goes on there, we don't like to have a little piece on the, on the top. Because obviously when you're fixing that back, if there's any fixings in it, you've got a good chance of cracking the tile. So we've got a lovely amount of above, that's nice. And then again, full tile off the floor, infill into the bottom, as specified by the client, and that's that. So then guys, everything's finished in the bathrooms. So this is the master en suite. This is all down, it's grouted up. Just gotta give it a quick final wash, just waiting for it to all dry up properly. These are the 1200 by 600 we started off with. This is a slightly darker vein tile. We've used silver gray grouting into this. I like to use Mapai, as you've probably seen in previous videos. Yeah, quite straightforward really. It's just two full tiles up, cut into the corner, so it looks like it wraps around. And that's it really, it's quite straightforward. Yeah, so this is uh, silver gray into this one. If I move you into the next bedroom. It's the second ensuite. Again, this is the slightly lighter tile. Same color grout though, because as this dries, at the minute it looks a little bit darker. When this dries out, it will be a lot closer to the veining in the tiles. The veining in this tile and the other tile is very, very similar. So that's why we went for this color grout. Just because it tries to tie it in together, I'm not trying to get too, too clever with it, there's no need. Uh, it's gonna look really, really nice. Again, it's only just been grouted. Just gotta wait for it to go off a little bit and then I can give it a second wash off just to get any excess off. It's good good practice that is really. Always try and do two washes where you can. Obviously, it depends on the grouts you use, but with the map eye stuff, generally it starts going up within around sort of 45 minutes. So by the time you cleaned all your kit out, you can get on and give everything a good second coat with the water. Same layout in here, because it's the same size tray. You've got your full tiles, two, two rows going from the tray up when they're cut into the corner. Like I say, second wash on this one, then it will look bang on. And then we've done the family bathroom through here. Plain white tile on the walls here. Again, we've only just grouted this up. Full tile from the bottom is the client requested. This is the 400 by 250. So we've gone full tile off the tray, finished above where the uh, rain shower is going to be in the riser. 
That looks really, really nice just as white. She wants it to be really subtle and stated. And then on the floor, obviously this is the more of the feature of the room, a lot busier floor. The grout color that we've gone with sort of matches the edge of the tile. The map eye color is actually called Manhattan. It's kind of like a light to mid gray color. So as this dries, it should blend in really, really nicely. It's already starting to blend in quite well. So then guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Leave as many comments as you want. I'll try and get back to as many as I can when I get a chance. So yeah, I'll see you next time. Cheers.